In this video, I talk about the new feature of rulers and guides in the Adobe Captivate 9.0.1 update. With the release of Adobe Captivate 9.0.1, we gain a few really neat features and there's also some bug fixes there. But the thing that probably stands out the most to me is the addition of rulers and guides. Uh, I think a real, real benefit to Adobe Captivate, especially for those who are very concerned about the look and feel of their e-learning, uh, being able to very precisely place objects on screen, I think is extremely important. And the combination of rulers and guides can really help you with that. So let's talk about it. I'll take you through a quick tour of how this feature works and uh, what you can do. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn rulers on. And that's done from the View drop-down menu. You can simply select uh, Show Rulers. Alternatively, you could hit Control-Alt-R, and that will do the same thing for you. And that will give you a ruler uh, across the top and along the left-hand side. Incidentally, the color for the ruler a uh, preview of it is given in the upper left hand corner here. You can change those settings within your preferences window and I'll show you that in a moment. But first I want to mention that when you are designing a standard project, uh, also known as a blank project, um, this is uh, going to give you pixels across the screen. So you'll start from zero and work all the way up to the particular uh, size of course that you're designing. Uh, in the case of responsive design though, you will have a choice, uh, the default being percentage, but if you right click on the ruler, you'll see that you can switch that to pixels or back to percentage as you see fit, depending on what you're working on at that particular time. I'm gonna stick with percentage for now. Let's talk a little bit about changing the colors. Uh, obviously, if I'm designing a course that's predominantly on a white or light colored background, I'm going to want a darker guide to appear on screen. Uh, and the reverse is true. If my background is dark, I'm going to want a lighter guide. So the ability to change those guide colors is important. Uh, to do so, click your Edit drop down menu and go all the way to the bottom where it says Preferences. Alternatively, you can press Shift F8. And that will bring up the Preferences dialog. Uh, from here, you're looking for the category of defaults. And you'll see these, uh, these two uh, items here, Default Guide Color Percentage and Default Guide Color Pixels. And depending on which type of ruler you're using at the time, you could actually have two different colors. Uh, so I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to stick with purple here, but you can see you can pick any number of color that, uh, or any um, choice of color that you can select from the color selection uh, window. So I'm going to click OK here, and now we're going to add some guides for margins, first of all. So one of the things that I like to do is to make sure that I have uh, space around my, my uh, content. Uh, just to give it a little white space, but also to accommodate for things like uh, closed captioning or navigation controls and things like that. So to create a guide, you simply uh, click your mouse on either the top ruler or side ruler and drag down uh, to the appropriate spot. So uh, let's just uh, shrink this down a little bit here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some margins around this here, say 10% uh, on all sides, just to pick a spot there. So you just uh, get as close to 10 as you can. Uh, sometimes it can be a little finicky. That's 9.9. .9. That's close enough for me. Same thing at the bottom here. We'll just go up to 90%, which is leaving 10% at the bottom there. And we'll do the same thing on the sides here. So from the right, we'll do 10%. So in other words, 90% here. And we'll just set that close. There we go. And the same thing on this side here. And let's get that to 
close enough. You can zoom in closer and, and play around with that and try and get it more precise if you need it to. The other types of guides that you might want to have on your screen are guides for certain things that, you know, let's say you just want to know where the halfway point on your slide is and be able to snap to that. This is useful if, let's say, you wanted to make a, a two-column um, arrangement here. So there's 50%. And if you wanted to add a little bit of safety space around 50%, you know, sort of to create its own margin, you could actually take this to, let's say, 50, let's say 55. Uh, let's say 53. That's just 55 might be a little too large. And again, there we go. We'll do another one on this side here, and this will allow us to easily create uh, two columns of information. Uh, so in this case here, we want to be at 57% um, if we can get it there. 50, there we go. And um, the other guide that I like to create, I've, I've, you know, I'm sure I'll come up with other reasons to use guides in the future, but space for my title as well. So um, let's say we're 10%. We're we have this one here at 10%. Let's take it down to um, 15. Um, or sorry, 20. We'll go, go to 20. That makes more sense, I think. And... Trying to get this to land precisely on 20 is hard. So now I have some space for uh, for all my objects. So, for example, if I was to create two columns of text, I could very easily see where those columns should line up, and you know, including the the margin space and so forth. Uh, so the safety space, I don't want it to be right on the center. I want it to have a little bit of a 10% gap between the two. That's all there for you. Now, there's a couple things that you might want to do to your guides once you've created them. Um, if you go into the View drop-down menu, you can, of course, if you've totally mucked it up, you can clear your guides. This will wipe out all of the guides you've created. But you can temporarily hide your guides. So if you want to a preview of what your slide looks like without all those guides in front. You can uh, you can preview that as well. So let's turn uh, the guides back on here. And I think probably the most important feature is uh, two things. Once you've got your guides set the way you want, you probably want to lock them. And then you also want to be able to snap two guides. And I'll show you how that functions as well. So uh, for example, this title, if we want it to always be in the exact same location, let's get in nice and close here to that title. If I drag this, even within a certain number of pixels, and I believe this can be set as well, I don't have to be right on. It will snap into that position there. Or alternatively, I could do it at this point here. It's going to snap that title in. And then, of course, I can resize it from there. Um, but I think probably the best way to go is to, uh, you know, have your align top and align left and then slide up into that position there. And then, of course, you could resize the, the text accordingly and, and, and make it fit the space that you have. Um, but that's perfect. In this way, if I go to uh, the next slide, I've got this one here and I can do the exact same thing. And this way I can ensure that my titles will always be in the exact same location for every slide. And again, um, so if I've got two columns of text by having these guides in position, I can snap to those spots and make sure that without having to play around with my alignment tools, I can make sure that I'm right in that exact spot. And that allows me to uh, create a text body that, uh, that perfectly fits the space that I need. Hopefully uh, you enjoy my videos. And if you do, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel 
And if you thought this video was useful or helpful to you, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.